14 countries, 29 U.S. states, 30 years, $10 billion, hundreds of human minds, and numerous international agencies to build physical components and much, much more. This is what it has taken to bring the James Webb Space Telescope to life. Yes, it really is the single most advanced marvel of engineering ever produced by human hands. But do you know what it's actually going to do? How it will reach new cosmic milestones? If not, we will find out in just a second. But before we move any further, don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and ring the notification bell so that you get notified every time we upload a new video. Now without any further ado, let's get right into it. Launched on December 25, 2021, the James Webb Space Telescope is scheduled to begin science operations this summer. In the first year of its scientific operations, Webb will primarily study the early stars in the universe. How? Well, the answer is a lot simpler than it sounds, by observing in infrared light. Light travels at a fixed speed, so it takes time for light from any distant objects to reach us. When we look at really distant objects, we are seeing them as they were a long time ago. And because the universe is always expanding, light from those distant early objects is stretched out before even reaching our telescopes. For the farthest, earliest objects out there, that light gets stretched out to infrared wavelengths, or to put it another way, wavelengths that are longer than what humans can see. Webb will now be observing these wavelengths to peek at the earliest stars, but even more importantly, to look for life. One of the original goals of Webb was to find Earth-like planets around other stars. There it could search for evidence of life. However, 25 years ago, only a few planets orbiting other sun-like stars were known. And each of those worlds was a fiery gas giant. They didn't resemble Earth in the least. However, since then, thousands of exoplanets have been found orbiting distant stars. And scientists now believe that each star in the sky has at least one planet orbiting them. Some of these planets are tiny and rocky, with temperatures suitable for liquid water. That is exactly what makes them promising spots to look for life. As of 2022, two space telescopes have already started this work. One is Hubble, and the other is the Spitzer Space Telescope. Like Webb, Spitzer observes infrared light, but Spitzer ran out of coolant in 2009. As a result, the telescope is now too warm to measure important molecules in exoplanet atmospheres. Meanwhile, Hubble is insensitive to some of the most interesting wavelengths of light, namely, one that could reveal alien life. And that is exactly where Webb is going to shine. When it comes to observing exoplanets, using Hubble is like peeking through a crack in a door, but Webb will throw the door wide open. Unlike Hubble, Webb is sensitive to several molecules that contain carbon. And this is really important because such molecules in an exoplanet atmosphere could be the signs of life. Apart from that, Webb also has the potential to be a tiebreaker. Not sure what we're talking about? Then keep watching. The Hubble constant is the rate of expansion of the universe. For several years, different methods for measuring it have given different answers. And this, in astronomer Wendy Friedman's words, is the most important problem in cosmology. Why? Because it can vary depending on how you measure it. For instance, one way to measure the Hubble constant is by measuring the distances and speeds of distant objects whose brightness is known. If you know its actual brightness, you can calculate the object's distance based on how bright it looks from Earth. Using this method, studies have found one expansion rate for the universe. That rate is 74.0 kilometers per second for every 3 million light years of space. However, the result was completely different when scientists used a different approach. That is, looking at the cosmic microwave background. This dim glow of light was emitted just 380,000 years after the Big Bang. And calculations based on that glow give a smaller rate of expansion, 67.4 kilometers per second per 3 million light years. These numbers may seem close, but the fact that they differ at all is a big deal. It has the potential to alter our understanding of what the universe contains and how it evolves over time. However, now, with the launch of Webb, scientists are hopeful that this crisis will soon be settled. Once Webb starts operating, it will try to measure the Hubble constant in a completely new and more efficient approach. 
Webb will look at a galaxy that has been gravitationally lensed. In other words, a distant galaxy whose light has been distorted and magnified by the gravitational pull of a closer galaxy. Measuring the time it takes light to travel from the distant galaxy through the closer galaxy and finally to Webb can help measure the Hubble constant in an indirect way. All those measurements will then be compared by astronomers. These data can also be further checked against similar observations made by the Hubble Space Telescope. So, not only do we have better data, but we also have improved accuracy, and not to mention, a better understanding of the OG galaxies. Using Webb's infrared vision and Hubble's data collected over the years, astronomers will be able to look into the process that caused the formation of large galaxies like we see today. Galaxies, such as the Milky Way, evolved over billions of years through mergers with smaller galaxies and other processes. However, the universe's very early galaxies seem to be rather different, sometimes rather tiny and clumpy with stars. By observing galaxies in the ancient universe, scientists will be able to study how galaxies evolved over time to form the structures that they are in today. And it's not only galaxies. Webb will also help us in better understanding the life cycle of the stars. The galaxies that fill the universe originated very early on, and they've steadily evolved ever since then. But that's not true for the stars inside them, which go through life cycles similar to living creatures. They are born, develop, age, and die, and their remnants contribute to the raw material needed to create new stars. Much of this process is generally known, but the actual birth of stars and the planetary disks that may form around them still remains a mystery. That is because newborn stars are initially enveloped in a cocoon of dust that ordinary telescopes using visible light cannot penetrate. However, all of this dust will be virtually transparent at the infrared wavelengths used by Webb. So NASA hopes it will finally reveal the ultimate secrets of star formation. And in turn, we may be able to learn something more about the origins of our own sun and solar system in the coming decade. We say coming decade because, unlike Hubble, which has lasted decades thanks to the fixes and upgrades made by the astronauts, Webb cannot afford that luxury. After all, the location of telescope matters as well. The Hubble was put into low Earth orbit via the cargo bay of the space shuttle and is roughly 340 miles above the surface. It's not only near, but it's also designed to be repaired if necessary. In fact, astronauts have already done that five times, rocketing to the telescope, swapping out instruments, installing new gyroscopes, and keeping it operational for three decades and counting. But for the web, repair is not an option. Even if the instruments were designed to be replaced when they got old, who would perform that task? Webb will orbit the Sun around L2, or Lagrange Point 2, a gravitationally stable solar orbit about 1 million miles from Earth on the other side of our planet from the Sun. There is no spaceship capable of transporting astronauts to such a distant location and safely returning them. That is why Webb has a very limited lifespan. The fuel is only guaranteed to last for 10 years. With luck, it could last more than that. But when the fuel runs out, Webb is finished. The telescope operators will retire it to an out-of-the-way orbit around the sun. Then, astronomers will have to bid it farewell. But until then, let's hope Webb makes some insane discoveries so that the astronomers won't be left with any regrets. With that being said, we have come to the end of the video. What are your thoughts on the James Webb Space Telescope? Do you think the limited lifetime of the telescope will eventually prove to be a major setback for astronomers? If so, what do you think they'll do? Will they send a crew to fix Webb? Or will they just build and launch a brand new telescope? Let us know in the comment section below. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit the like button and share with your friends. We will be back with another video soon. Another video.